exceptional as it's ever been in its 72-year history. And a new ESPN report from this morning revealed that the hiring of Magic and Rob Palenka made it a bit more dysfunctional. Yeah. So sources who feared reprisal described Palenka and Johnson as managers who made unilateral free agent, free agent acquisitions, triggered a spate of tampering investigations and fines, berated staffers, including Wallen, and created an in-house culture that many say marginalized their colleagues, inspired fear, and led to feelings of anxiety severe enough that two, sta two staffers suffered panic attacks. Yikes. Yikes, 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 yikes. This is a mess. Not, not the best working environment. No, look, not great. I, look, they, I feel like if you take anything from this report, like whatever yeah. you believe, if you believe some of it, you've got to believe all of it because you can't really go through like, well, I think, you know, right. I'm going to pick this side of this story of mass dysfunction. The bottom line for me, the biggest takeaway is Magic saw this coming and removed himself from the situation. Right. So for whatever you feel about how this environment was, how negative it was, he was aware that this was either coming or he felt like he had had enough of the dysfunction himself. My issue is, well, I agree with you about they need to do a trade as soon as possible. Palinka is still there. So what's changed? Well, nothing. I mean, nothing's really changed. It remains dysfunctional. But if you trade for people, at least... Don't give the opportunity for people to choose you. You go choose them and bring them in. Because you've got, after this article, you've got to now change the, the public narrative on that market. And the only way you can do it is get a good guy like Bradley Beal or you get an Anthony Davis. Considered good guys. We know LeBron's a good dude. And then at least, because my takeaway now is no agent could send any player to this mess. The bottom line for me with the Lakers is if you look across... Any organization, but let's just stick with sports. If you talk more about the owner and the front office than yeah. you do about the actual product yeah. that is on the court of the field, you have a dysfunctional franchise. Yeah. The best run franchises, we never talk about their owners other than saying, this is a good owner. Yeah. The end, that's yeah. the full sentence. Yeah. This is a good owner that spends a lot of money. The end. That's the full sentence. There is no but or and after that. You don't talk about the owner and you don't talk about the front office. They're anonymous or just irrelevant other than just being giving the proper people the resources that they need to do their jobs. All we talk about is the front office and the ownership with the Lakers. Any organization we do that with is a problem. Yeah. If we talk about the coach a lot, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad team. Yeah. And if we talk about the team, it doesn't mean that they're a bad team. We should not be talking about the people running the I can't tell you who own. I mean, seriously, could you could you tell me what the Spurs owner looks like? No. Or the Cardinals owner through the years? It's like, to be honest with you, I... I Steve Ballmer and Mark Cuban are fairly visible, but if you go through the history but of the league... Uh, and when we're talking about Cuban, yeah. is it is it necessarily a good thing? No. No, no not necessarily. And what do we say about Steve Ballmer? He cheers a lot. We don't talk anything about how, how the goings-on of the, the organization. He's hired people to run the organization. There's plenty of visible owners, but when we're having discussions about them, it's a problem. It has to stop. That's that's the number one problem for me. So Clay Thompson didn't make the All NBA team this season, which means no super max contract for him when he hits free agency this summer. But his father Michael says it's okay. He told the Athletic, "Yeah, it's a lot of money, but when you're talking about the astronomical numbers that the best NBA players make, you can't quibble over it because you're still making generational changing money. Too many people out there are struggling in the world to make ends meet for anyone to be whining about not making." $30 million more. Yeah, perspective. He also said he's very happy in Golden State. He should be. That. That's a great spot for him. This is this is perspective, and it is his father, and Clay Thompson is going to make around $190 million. Yeah. Which is a lot of money. Yeah. That said, I still would be irritated over losing $30 million off of not making the All-NBA team if we play Thompson. Yeah. I, I'm going to give him a pass. It's still $30 million. Yeah, it's not I, like he's worth $58 billion. There, There's a difference between annoyed and consumed. You can be annoyed by stuff. Just yeah. Don't, you know, sometimes. I, but I don't think he is consumed no. by it. I mean, I don't know. But I, I, he, first of all, he found out in a press conference, which is yeah. not the way you would find out that you just right. missed out on $30 million. But it, it is perspective. It's just For me, I just feel like that's not really... I don't know if I like that that rule even exists. Obviously, it's it's in the CBA, so... I have a higher regard for Clay Thompson. If you told me I'm going to give you a player, A-plus shooter in 2019, A-plus defender, no drama, I'd be like, there's like four of those in the league. Kawhi Leonard's the other. And like, honestly, I could make an argument. The closest thing to Kawhi in terms of can shoot, 
can play defense, no drama. I could argue it's Clay. He's, I mean, very, he's very consistent. Physically, they can match up with small forwards, Clay, or guards. Clay and, and Kawhi. Of, we always talk about, well, now KD and then Steph and Draymond, or with Steph and then Draymond, and it's always Clay last in this group of the elite in Golden State. And he is just as important to their success as, as all of them, if, if, if not the most, because when he is not consistent, it's a problem. So finally, five-star prospect and consensus top five pick in the 2020 NBA mock drafts, RJ Hampton, is skipping college basketball to play professionally for the New Zealand Breakers in the NBL. This yeah. is a surprising decision that comes after he reclassified his high school graduating year from 2020 to 2019 earlier this spring. He believes playing in New Zealand will best prepare him for the NBA. And he told ESPN, my number one goal is to play in the NBA. I wanted to be an NBA player before I ever wanted to be a college player. This is about getting ready for the next level faster and more efficiently. You can always go back to college, but there's only a short window as an athlete where you can play professional basketball. And I want to take advantage of that. I think that challenging yourself on a daily basis is the best way to improve. I, as mentioned. long as players have options, I, I love it. A kid can go G League. Yep. You can go to Duke. I, I don't think Duke hurts Zion. You can go to G League. You can go overseas. I had options coming out. Like, all I want for kids coming out of high school, trade school, junior college, major college, private college. This kid has options. He chose the international option. I'm, I'm all good with it. I think that's what the NBA wants the G League to essentially be is this option. Right. And they have a lot of development to do yeah. before it gets to that that level. I'm with you. I have no problem with, with, with kids having the ability to make their choice. What I don't like is that they have to go to college, and that's the only way that they get to the NBA. By the way, it, lots of people in society... I mean, I've gone to high school with people like this. They're not college people. They don't want to do college. They're, you meet an artist, and they're like, why do I want to go to a four-year state school? I Everything mean, is not for everybody. And this is not saying that you shouldn't get an education. And he mentioned that both of his parents are yes, highly educated. Yes, his mom has a master's degree. Right. They're, very, they're very serious about school. But he's right. You can go back to school. It's, it, the college will always be there. Listen, <laughs> it will always be available if, for you. If you want to be a chef, my stepson's a chef, and he wanted to be a chef when he was 16, why go to Ohio State for four years? He went to a culinary institute in Napa. Then he went to one in New York. That's what he wanted to do, and he's having a great career. Like it's not going to college isn't for everybody. And he wants to play basketball. So if you look at that, if you look at a, a trade school education like that, him playing in New Zealand yes, is essentially his, a trade school. His school. That's what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, joy with the news. Well, that's the.